that's right. Oh. Hey, everybody. Hey. Welcome to <laughs> Waffle Talk. Waffle Talk is a special show. It's a show by fans of Dice Camera Action for fans of Dice Camera Action, which is probably you. <gasps> and here's a, here's a little nugget for you. If you're in the chat on Twitch right now and you type something in that chat, it's going to pop up on the screen and we're going to talk to you live via cyberspace. So hello, look a trooper. I the power you. of the internet. <laughs> if I had to list the top 30 viewers, look a trooper is going to probably be number one. Probably. You know, but Aka fan, you just rocketed up the list, my friend. So uh, <laughs> congratulations. And today we are going to talk about Dice Camera Action episode 128. This episode involved the beach. And um, also I went on Reddit, the subreddit, just to see what people were talking about. And I grabbed some stuff off of that too. So first, Shauna, could you please tell the Waffle fam what happened on this episode? Yep, the, uh, all right, sorry, one second, my thing, there we go. Um, the Waffle crew go on a beach, on a beach vacation, which actually went surprisingly, like, uneventfully, other than a few minor shenanigans involving, you know, fishes and, like, golden dragons pulling uh, fishing lines. But there was also a slight bit of ominous issues coming from uh, Warrington Mutt, who had been acting very strangely, um, writing like weird sigils in the uh, in the Waffle House and having a conversation in his head with some entity that is very curious about Waterdeep. And as the uh, Wolf crew get, come back from their uh, vacation to the beach, they they have two packages. One of which is an invitation to the to the auction involving the next step with the uh, the the dragon dragon horde. And then second thing, which was meant for another person, Audrey but Paul opens it. And is smothered by a a magical rug, and that's kind of where we end it. I want to say, on this list of our top thirty people, Joe mm -hmm. Venom, you just you just blew the roof off of the joint by subscribing with Twitch Prime. Thank you, Joe. You're number one in my heart. That's for sure. Simo Wisen. <laughs> We got a beheaded Paulton next to Castle Ravenloft again, so yeah. I wouldn't call it too... Well, he was buried in sand. Mm -hmm. um, okay, here's the thing. Hmm. I just I went over my... You know, I do the Dice Camera Action Wikipedia on Gamepedia. What? And, uh, yeah, I, I know, right? <laughs> Why? It's, I tell you, it's, it's a whole thing. It's a, it's a, I'm, I'm, I'm the Dice Camera Action Institute. There's always something going on here. And uh, But the thing I would say, my big thing that struck me the most about this episode, Warrington Munt. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't so much that he was wearing his white uniform with gold medals to the beach, but we learned that someone is psychically contacting him. Mm. He was drawing a map on the floor of his room in Troll Skull Manor. Not just any kind of map either, a Gygaxian map. You know that not means Gygaxian <laughs> map. <laughs> and and for people who are newer to uh D D, Gygaxian means Gary Gygax, who is one of the creators of Dungeons and Dragons, and uh his original Castle Greyhawk map is just a sprawling, you know, detailed gigantic layers of, you know. Uh, it's a huge dungeon, so it's very involved, and there's sloping passages that the players won't be able to detect unless they're very clever. You won't mm -hmm. even know that you went down a level. Unless, anyway. So, uh, yeah, he was looking at the city with a spyglass, and he was talking to a creature whose name was Nigh Unpronounceable. Mm. So they called it Nigh. 
Yeah, his surname is unpronounceable. It, <laughs> Those like, are literally, so, that's the word. <laughs> that's always a good sign when the creature you're talking to has a unpronounceable name. Yeah. Concerning. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. I think it's from Dragon Heist, I think. Or maybe it's from Mad Mage. I think it's from Mad Mage. I don't know actually. if I should spoil it or not. Simon says, what kind of aberration could it be that is doing the psychic stuff? I'm pretty positive I know what it is. I don't know. Should we spoil mm. it or should we just leave it? See, I, I don't I don't want to spoil it because I think it's really good. But I, I mean, want to leave it because I haven't the faintest idea, but then um, at the same time, I haven't the faintest idea. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you had to guess, what would you guess? Mind flare. Uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the first one that comes to mind. Mind flare. Yeah. Yeah. They they're always the ones who talk to people in their minds. But it's weird because, yeah. like, um, if Warrington Munt is from Wild Space and Spelljammer, mm -hmm. there's a lot of Mind Flayers out there. Yeah, and he was, I mean, that's how he got here. Was... Yeah, that's right. He was fighting Mind Flayers. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It seems he like, would know yeah. what they sounded like, right? And it seems like if it were an abolist. he would know or be aware of, mm -hmm. be wary of this. Hmm. But he's not. Yeah, because he was just treated like, it's no big deal. It's just this <laughs> friend that's just friendly. curious about Waterdeep. <laughs> yeah. My friend. It would be interesting if it were an abolis. I just like. Uh, uh, I love them, but hate them. I've never yeah. come across them. <laughs> I'm scared. Look at Trooper wants it to be a thought eater. Um, oh, wow. Are, mm. are those the psychic? No, I'm thinking of Sioux monsters. Or it doesn't matter if a... they're statted for 5e yet. That's I, think, I think the thought eater is the psychic platypus. Platypus. Yeah. <laughs> That would actually be really cool. This evil platypus that? is uh, sch scheming and using, <laughs> infiltrating the waffle crew. Not that hard. Would be that hard? Waddling to and fro as it <laughs> plants. Um, Saima was feeling aboleth. Yeah, good. Yeah. Mm. It makes sense to me, but at the same time, there's so many other things. What if it was like. Uh, shoot, I'm forgetting what it is. It'll come to me. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so it's like, alright, so this thing is having him draw a dungeon map. Mm. I The feeling I get from this is that this is going to be a hook into Undermountain. Yeah. Definitely. It's, it's yeah, I think so. Yeah. Which, I agree with I that. I think, gives us, like, at least two levels of Undermountain. That they've been sort of like, hey, story hook, here you go. Because mm -hmm. there's a Char one, mm -hmm. and it's like this psychic whatever talking to Warrington. So, isn't there the vampire one? Well, I think that's connected to Char. Oh, know? okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not entirely sure either, but you know. Thought eaters, psychic platypodes that hang out on the ethereal plane, eating psionic minds. Hmm. Yeah. You should use Platypus. one of those. That's pretty good. There's also the brain moles, which are just moles that burrow oh. into your mind. Oh, that's right. Ugh. What? I I got distracted by a sister. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Beach episode. I jumped back in at a weird time. Notes. Here's what I got. <laughs> Lance the Mule still exists. I forgot yep. all about Lance the Mule. I'm glad. I, yeah. I actually yeah. thought about him the other day. I'm like, whatever happened to Lance? Mm -hmm. And there he is. I, I just, you know, I'm starting to just assume that the, the coven takes care of him. Just mm -hmm. kind of like the general upkeep the coven takes care of. The uh -huh. coven's like, oh, they forgot about another thing again. Yep. Yeah. Like, <laughs> all the NPCs just, they forget. Just, like, cleaning up. It's like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Not again. Yeah, they, they they take care of Lance and they the shop and all that stuff. Yeah. Simon says it could be Hallister. Chris is messing with us. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Chris likes that to that's so possible. Chris likes to, you know, mix it up and change it from the published version. So it could it could be Hallister. <laughs> Cause I know that there's a lot of stories about the shards of his mind that have hit citizens in water deep, so this could be some kind of deal with that, or who knows, you know. But it, it does it feel really like be anything Chris wants at I the mean, end of the day. We yeah. we're now in the back half of the season, and I kind yeah. of assumed that Dungeon of the Mad Mage was the last thirty episodes. 
So it seems like maybe we're starting to walk our way towards that adventure now. Mm-hmm. Although they still have to, they have, you know, they've got to resolve the the, the, the vault of dra- you know, the treasure. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're coming up on it. Where it seems we're like next auction. time is the auction. Yeah. This this could have been this episode could have been like the the rest before the the final mm-hmm. chunk. Yeah. The eye before the storm, mm-hmm. if you will. Auction yeah. and vault, probably. You know. So yeah, the uh, what's the deal with the auction? I don't remember. Like, what is that? I forget her name again. Esvale. Esvale. Yes. Viper, yeah. Viper. Um, oh. it's putting up an auction for the Stone of Galore, I believe. Oh. Yeah. Because she's done with it. Okay. She's done with it? I assume. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? Done question mark with it. Because <laughs> she has? got... Who has she it? had the stone, and she got the keys to the vault, right? Because she got, like, that drow hand and the beholder eye stalk and stuff. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. She got it all? I don't know yeah. if she got it at all. What if the Stone of Galore is like, you got all the keys? Psych! <laughs> Maybe she has. But, a... Wait she a minute! That she she has a stone and she has the keys, so yeah. she might already have the treasure. Oh God! There's <gasps> a chance of it. Or she, or I think partially that she maybe hmm. she has everything, but she just wants to auction it off to like. Any of you all want this? I mean, if she knows where the vault and stuff is, I don't. I don't even know that she needs the stone. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Maybe maybe one of the three keys. Does she have all three, or does she just have some? I think she said she did. She um, back three. when she visited the Waffle House and like the Drow attacked, uh, I think she said she had. <sighs> she wanted their help getting like one more or two more, I think, and mm-hmm. she got the the hand and the eye stalk, I do believe, from them. Mm-hmm. So, whatever else she needed, I don't know, but. And she's gonna auction off the stone. That's what the auction is. So Chris made it sound like. Yeah, that's at least how I remember it. I could be completely wrong. <laughs> so she might be a guest star next week. Then I'm guess. Yeah, Hopefully. she's probably gonna have to be like at some point. I would think. Yeah. <laughs> Good. She's awesome. Yeah. She's one of my favorites. I like seeing Strix being jealous, but not <laughs> she, understanding that nah, she's like, jealous. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's generally aggravated, not knowing why. To find why. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I love it. Which there's not many people to be at the auction anymore because the Castle Lanters and Joe Axel, I think, are the only villains left from the book anyway. That are alive, yeah. Yeah, that are alive. Yeah, that are alive. <laughs> Xanathar's dead. Uh, Manshun just got killed. Yep. yep. Wow. Although Erstal Floxen's still alive, so I don't know if he's doing anything. I wonder if there's someone who will take over the. Z- I mean, the Zentrum is a big thing, so someone will take it sure. over. Yeah. Yeah. Question is who? I mean, you know. Oh gosh. Uh, Look at Troopa says. Wonderful. See shard mines again. That would be cool. I like shard mines. Oh wow. Before. Diath has promised the gold to three separate parties, so they might need those thirty episodes to work that out. Well, he promised it to the dwarves. And who else? Castle Lanterns. Castle Lanterns oh. and Jarlaxel are both implicit. Oh. Then they, Waterdeep itself probably wants and, a little bit of that. Oh, and the, the, and the city yeah. guard, yeah, probably. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <That's funny. funny. laughs> the dwarves were the first ones, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they got dibs. It seems like they're the ones who should get it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I feel really wrong about the dwarves coming in just like, okay, give us the gold. Because, like, <laughs> It's not their gold, you know? It's true. They did embezzled say something about it. How money. They said it was embezzled from them. Well. First place. The dwarves, I mean, is that maybe, true, though? I don't know. Chris is changing things. I I, I'm pretty sure it started out as a hook into why you should do the Dragon Heist campaign. Mm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's why that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, from there, I don't know, though. Um. By now, a new Xanathar may well have taken the position. Mm-hmm. That would be awesome if a new awesome. Beholder has taken over the the group. That would be really cool. It seems like it might be too soon, mm. but I don't know. Well, they did like destroy the whole lair, so there's that. It's true. It it might be like a couple weeks. We we still like a couple months. Mm. There, so maybe. 
Sima says Mrs. Silverhand, the open lord of Waterdeep, might want to attend the auction. I kind of wonder. So this auction, everybody might be there. Could be some. Mm. Like Laryl Silverhand might be there. Some of the masked lords, like Omen, might be there. Oh, God. Um, oh, Jarlaxle no. would probably be there in disguise. Mm -hmm. uh, the Castle Lanterns might just be there. So they all, everybody in the whole... Wasn't it the Castle Lanterns who uh, invited the Waffle Crew in the first place? Yeah. yeah. Todd might be Todd. there. Todd. Todd. Guarding. <laughs> Doing guard shenanigans as, as you do. So, the group doesn't have Just any to money to, to buy this. Mm -mm. It's kind of weird that the, the stone, which is a key to getting 500,000 gold, might be go to the highest bidder. So, like, the richest person might be the one who gets more money. Money, yeah. It's very 1%-y, it's very you know? Yeah. It's like Jeff Bezos. That's nobles for you, I guess. Yeah, that's, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> George, I shouldn't even say George Soros, <laughs> you know, hmm. that kind of water deep. Romysis, there is a crime vacuum in the city right now. The Xanathar's Guild is disbanded, and Manchu's yeah. faction is dead or arrested. True, very true. The and whole Zentarim isn't arrested, though. I'm pretty sure, just the ones that showed up. Yeah, there's <laughs> still like the legitimate arm of the centaur mm -hmm. so around so maybe that side is now like has finally that power balance is finally tipped in their their manner because it was like power mm -hmm. power issues within the centaur mm -hmm. true it, i just yeah. know that the Zentarim is one of the main guilds that you can be a part of in adventurers league so oh, yeah so yeah, they. I remember. I say guild, it's faction. Sorry. Yeah, I remember they <laughs> about when Five E first came out and they started doing that. They gave you like a little like, welcome to welcome to the faction, and this in turn was like, basically, welcome to the mob. And was like, oh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like Captain Diaz mm -hmm. might be the person who cleans up Waterdeep. <gasps> you know. Ooh. Because if he wiped out this, the Zentrum and the Xanathar guild, and then he takes care of Jarlaxle, this group can kill Jarlaxle, right? That's true, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. They might yeah. kill him. Oh, don't kill Jarlaxle. He has <laughs> lots of magic items. One. He has lots of magic items to prevent that, though. Like, mm -hmm. Hey, what did Strix, in the begin very beginning of the episode, mm -hmm. Strix talked a little bit about her staff of power. Mm-hmm. Oh, she was scared of it and just put it in the corner. Did she just leave it in her room? Yes. Yeah. Left it in her room, right on top of the the cloak too. The robe. No. no. I'm sure it'll yes. be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> the platypus is gonna get all that stuff. <laughs> you know. Yeah. They do. They do have. They they do have arcane lock now, right? They are locking their doors, right? In theory. Yeah. They're in locking theory. the doors. So like they did, I th I'm pretty sure they did one time. Uh -huh. <laughs> one and the time. chicken one time. <laughs> the chicken foot coven was there to guard the house, right? I imagine they do a better job guarding the house. Yeah. Um, let's see. Only Ot Steel Toes and Amaergo are still alive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ot we last saw, I think, in a jail. Yep. And Amaergo was told by the group to guard the labyrinth of the sewers. Yeah. And uh that was the last we saw, I think. Maybe this auction will be the second DCA Infinity War. Could be. Yeah, it could just end up in a huge battle, I guess. Yeah. If things go south, yeah. I kind of feel like it's going to be I a thing where the lights go out and then the stone is gone or something like <gasps> that. Yeah, I don't think this stone is going to get sold. Mm. No way. It's going to get thrown Darkness. around. Or it's a fake, maybe. Oh yeah! Ooh, <gasps> ooh, true. maybe it's been out of circulation for a while, so it's probably enough time to make a. Mm. If Lady Rosnar is selling it, though, it feels like then she's done with it. She did whatever she wanted to do with it, and now it's. I... Or maybe not. Maybe she doesn't want to chase or or get involved in in a mad rush for it, and is just yeah, gonna kind of cash out. 
maybe it's like the fact that like yeah, it is five hundred thousand like dragons, mm. but that's five hundred thousand dragons that people probably lay claim to and stuff like that, like like the dwarves or like the city. So maybe you don't want to get involved. In it. You want to get a little bit of money and not have the entire thing. <laughs> what if she went in and just like I need this much to put myself back on my feet and then. <laughs> Left. It's like a hundred thousand. It's just <laughs> an IOU. It's like, oh, are you five hundred thousand? Maybe it. it's. She's. This is a legit way for her to make money because mm -hmm. the five hundred thousand is technically probably stolen funds, stolen. and you Embezzled, could lose yeah. it all. So maybe she's going to settle for like a hundred thousand at this auction, and just wipe her hands clean. It's possible. Like, or or maybe she's going to sell it and then steal it back. Mm. Oh, that's true. Yeah, thief. That would be cool. Awesome. And then if the Waffle Crew get it, she's like, oh no. <laughs> Waffle Crew has no money. Right? They have no money. They barely, I think. I think yeah, the, I don't think I they'll think get the it. The bakery but... is barely sustainable. I mean, <laughs> at the live never... show, wasn't it said that it was doing badly? It was doing yeah. badly. I think uh, all Strix did was make cricket pies. <laughs> Uh, and had one of the kids doing the sign stuff, right? Spin I mean, you know, that's the best that use. The the that's the best use of Squiggly, though, for his energy is just to spin yeah. a sign around. Uh huh. Yeah. Remisus. Interestingly, Strix's D and D Beyond character sheet already has the spells from the staff added on it, and she has the robe of the Archmage I listed on there as well, despite nice. it being the wrong color. Hmm. I don't know if she got clearance from Chris though. Hmm. Thanks. Maybe just something like we just to keep tabs on, like that you have this thing because sometimes they don't put it down. It's like you forget about it. I can remember that. Yeah, it's yeah. cool that yeah. she's, she's gone over all the stuff she can do, and it's gonna be awesome. Mm -hmm. She can bring the staff with her to the the auction and blow everybody up. Please, be awesome. Walton has been getting famous though. It's true. Mm -hmm. I yeah. can't tell, and he might have been spending it all in booze hmm. based off of the last episode. That might be the case, but <laughs> um, it's a point. Maybe when they settle this Stone of Galore stuff, maybe he'll have a huge concert, <gasps> like Live Aid or something, and he'll That'd be fun. And make a ton of yes. money. <laughs> it's just we've never gotten an exact amount of money from Perkins. Just like, oh yeah, the boats cost a silver piece to rent. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, we can afford that much. Uh -huh. <laughs> but how much do you have? I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about something during the show. What are Paulton's hmm. songs about? I don't. Drinking? I think I they're, it's mostly bagpipes and he doesn't have to say anything. Uh, oh, yeah. really? Except it's bagpipes. So the one time, well, it is in the yawning portal mural. It's true. Um, but but also there was the one time uh two episodes ago, I think. He was no, maybe three. It was probably three. He was playing the lute with his hand, Andrew. <laughs> oh, right. So he might just be one of those like classical acoustic guitar players <laughs> just on the lute. So mm. there might not be lyrics, he might not mm -hmm. sing. Unless he says otherwise. <laughs> That's what I've been picturing. I mean, what would the songs... <laughs> okay. Because I was thinking, would he have written any songs about uh, the Waffle Crew or Strahd or Barovia or or Evelyn? He has to. Or the Raven Queen? He probably has. He probably would, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'd be interesting to learn more about that. I would like to hear more. Hmm. I think Evelyn might get real... I don't know. Depending on what he sang, you know. Secret song about Evelyn. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Uh, Saima says maybe she doesn't know. She'll lose her memories about the stone. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's why I was thinking. <laughs> mm. The stone. I don't know what has been said on the show about the stone. I forgot. It can mess with you. So the yeah. stone might yeah. be making her sell it. It's true. All I know is that in the last person who had it didn't remember having it. And in Dark and Dicey, <laughs> some of them forgot that they even had it. And only a few of them remember. Mm. That's all I've got. Uh, yeah. 
Saima says, Paulton has been making some decent money from a low-level perspective. Paulton has said he rather doesn't sing. He only really does it for bardic inspiration sometimes. Hmm. There you go. He should sing. Be more. It's interesting. Because he could see yeah, all the stuff they went through and they could, he could do. Yeah, he make well, awesome he songs. Could, yeah. Maybe he writes lyrics. He just doesn't, doesn't sing. sing them. Yeah. yeah. It's maybe, possible. Maybe he has a secret songbook somewhere <laughs> that contains his true thoughts that he buries with alcohol and oh. fourth wall breaking. <laughs> you know? Maybe he sings... <laughs> he can see through the fourth wall, so maybe some of his songs are about, you know, seeing... Watch him mm. sing Bones. Maybe he has a song about Chris Perkins. <laughs> Why, why, why are you doing this to us? <laughs> why does this happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> Remisis, I'm surprised he's still keeping the loot after he learned the ho- <laughs> This is yeah. what a great point. I'm yeah. surprised he's keeping the loot after he learned that the Harpers planted a listening device in it. It's very true. He trusts the Harpers because of the whole uh, Ring of Winter shenaniganry. Mm. That's right. Now, everything they do, the Harpers are hearing. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they heard the whole... I don't know. Did he have the loot with him at the beach? I don't don't think so, but he might have. It's only because of he was in his, like, Swim shorts. <laughs> All he did at the beach the was get really drunk and get buried in the sand. I mean, there's not what. Yeah, there probably wasn't much to hear. It's just like it's just him taking yeah. a nap, for, you know, being drunk and doing his accent. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a good voice. He yeah. did. I couldn't tell what he was saying half the time. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Trooper, my tiefling's bagpipe, a bagpiper or a pipe bagger. Uh, I like the instrument. I forgot that he used bagpipes. So I miss his castanets. What is that? The, the castanets? They're the two little uh, things that are about this big, and you go like this. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. He has good. those. He's never used them. Yeah. Hermesis, <laughs> and doesn't the fact he blasts music through it make it a really poor listening device? Yeah, yeah. Only it depends on where it is, actually. On on the thing, if it's in the neck, it'll probably be a more a, a better listening device than if it's in like <laughs> the body of the thing. <laughs> yeah, where it actually resonates. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so also, if it's near the tuning pegs, that's it's probably really good, actually. If it's three strings loot, it only has three strings on it, so it's not a very good loot either. <laughs> no, you just oh, that's that the one. did. That's the one he stole from Matrim Three Strings. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. yeah. He has no Three remorse Three. about that either. Nope. <laughs> nope. None. You know that guy. Neutral. <laughs> Not sorry. Saima. All Paulton had at the beach was his swimwear, his towels, his chair, and 50 bottles of wine. <laughs> the last bottles. of the, the stash. Drank all of, I think. You didn't. You never 50? said. He he drank a lot of it though. Well, the, Chris did mention that he he was. Uh, Chris said something about that was the last of it or something like that. Mm. Yeah, it was the last of the cargo hold stash. How much oh. was there to begin with? If that's the stash, I don't know. What's left? Fifty balls is a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> Akapan says Perkins should make Nate do con save to see if he passes out. Yeah, but Nate asked for that. <laughs> yeah. I would say that he, um, Paulton's tolerance is so high it's inc- that he probably... I was thinking a way to handle drinking would be every every drink, like every cup, the DC goes up by one. So yeah. if it starts at 10, and it's like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, all the way to 20. And I would imagine Paulton is like so specialized in it that he has advantage on his, those saving throws. So. <laughs> and if he's near and Evelyn, if he's near Evelyn, and he's got like plus something, plus four yeah. or five. Oh, God. So, <laughs> so, I've never thought about your paladin's aura being used to get more drunk, or less, or keep you from getting too drunk. She's enabling him. She, yeah, that's what she's doing. <laughs> with her aura. Thanks, Evelyn. She's like, turning it off. If you figure out that, like, if I, if 
if I stay around her, I can drink more without getting super wasted. Uh huh. That's the first thing he found out when they started traveling together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait oh. a second. <laughs> Makes me. I definitely want to watch episode one again. I have. Mm. I, I haven't watched it since, you know, it came out. So, kind of want to see what we see. Hmm. Characters, I think, were a little different in the beginning as they were oh. still feeling out. Yes, was supposed so, to be happy go lucky. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That's funny. The boy I, has anxiety. I just remember on episode one, Strix and Evelyn were like hilarious. That's the main thing that I remember is that they were just off the wall. They clicked immediately, and yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Remises, his Idol Champions Twitter advertisement has pictures of his bagpipes. What's cool is it has a pic of the gear and ring he hangs around his neck. It calls them Soulmate Necklace. Oh, oh look at that. There I cosplay right. Paulton. Oh my god. Now, where, where's the ring? I gave I gave Nate the gear that he has on his necklace. It really? Mm-hmm. Wow. At Pax Unplugged because he lost his. Wow. That's awesome. So um so what is the ring that he wears? It's uh Evelyn's, right? It's Evelyn's signet ring from episode fifty two. Yeah. Oh, oh, he, oh, really? He yep. wears that. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Um, that's interesting. Look at true. Also, Pro side note: episode fifty-two is when they actually kissed. Well, yeah, that's true. And that was <laughs> very one-sided. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time. Yeah. yeah. Re rejected, like with with impunity. No, it was very. <laughs> it was very much like, no, you're not dying, and that's it. Hmm. Luca Trupa says, considering his relationship with the fourth wall, I wonder if Paulton's going to get in on some of the same kind of travel to Earth. That would be a cool episode. Uh, the, like in Dragon Does Magazine, drinks Mountain Dew? they used to have these articles in Dragon Magazine where Elminster would come to Earth. And meet with other wizards from other settings. So there's like a Dragonlance wizard there. And like Mordenkainen from Greyhawk would be there. So that would be really cool if Paulton ended up uh, have like his own version of one of those or at one of those. That would be really cool. Like, And that was also uh, like Ed Greenwood's explanation for here's how I write about all this play things from a fantasy world. Elminster comes and drinks Mountain Dew in my kitchen and tells me about it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sima says, Paulton is actually a very bad drinker from what the drinking game in the Shadowfell tells us. Yeah, but that Sorry. was 58 plus episodes ago. It, like... <laughs> wow, was it really that long ago? Why, what, like what, that. What, what, what happened in the drinking game? Uh, he... He placed a bet with the Shadar Kai, and the bet was they would take his face if he right. lost, and he lost, and then it didn't take his face. That's right. That's true. Sima says that uh, Evelyn would actually be great in a drinking competition. 22 yes. Constitution and her aura. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, uh, I think they're immune. Paladins are immune to disease. Disease. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are they immune to poison? I don't. I don't, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't think monks are. Because but... if she was immune to poison, I wonder if that means she, she couldn't get drunk. You know? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know if I would. She she wouldn't be able to get alcohol poisoning. Yeah. But there's there's a difference between drunk and drunk is tech. Yeah. Drunk, you're kind of being like enjoy we poisoned. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just kind of want to give Paulton a tankard of sobriety and see what happens. Oh. <laughs> um, all right, so Morning Glory showed up. Mm. Yeah, all the time got Morning Glory. We hadn't wow. seen Morning Glory in a long time. Mm -hmm. Baby sat squiggly, squiggly. Yeah, is Morning Glory just a normal horse right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, normal yeah. as much as a real sparkle and magical it can look. Um, divine horse. <laughs> Uh, cause in Barovia it was an undead horse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when she died, it was a Pegasus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now it's just a normal horse in mm -hmm. Water Horse. Well, that changes. She gains levels. Is that how that works, or is it just? Well, actually, there is a find greater steed 
spell. Yeah, oh, there is. Okay. In Xanathar's guide. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if she takes that, she could upgrade basically. Oh, it's a level thirteen that she could get that actually. Cool. So soon. They're it's very soon. They're twelve soon. right now, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next level, I guess. Next time they. So. Uh, you think if she summons a a Pegasus Morning Glory, she'll remember more of heaven? Oh, maybe. maybe. Oh, that's a good point. That is maybe. good. That's a good point. Because as it is, she just thinks it's a dream. That that part of it. Hmm. Booker Trooper says you got to le- learn to drink somehow. Uh, Alcaban mm-hmm. says in 3.5, paladins were immune to poison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I seem to have this thing in my head where they, pal- some paladins do get immune to poison at some point. But I don't. I they be, might. It might be one of the the um the sub subclasses maybe. Let's see. It, my player's handbook is way over there, so uh, I, don't, <laughs> I usually have it right here, but no. <laughs> Not this time. says the narcotic effect of alcohol is distinct from the toxic elements. If you're immune to poison, you can. St- oh, okay. All right. And Saima can't wait for the greater steed fourth level paladin spell let's go so it's one level from now how long mm. have they been level 12 did they just level recently i think it was recent i really I think, think so. so yeah it yeah. might be a while because a little while diath used his feet for the first time ever uh, and and we're talking about it now so it's, like, it's true i just think it was recent i could be wrong i, I, think, it's really a, I think it may have been a little while since they leveled yeah but they don't want to level that's what they've been saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, Remysis, I think Anna said Morning Glory has, a, that's right, a pattern on her hide that looks like wings. That's right. Yeah. They look like little feathers. Oh, there you go. Saima, they can cure poison with their lay on hands ability by spending five hit points from the pool. Yeah. Right. So right. that means uh, maybe, maybe Paul's in when he gets drunk. Just like snap out of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so we did Warrington Month. That was the most important thing to me. Indeed, yeah. yeah. I just want every episode to have at least a little slice of Warrington Month, mm-hmm. like a sentence. Yeah. At least. And this whole psychic thing is very interesting. I was not expecting that at all. So We can add it to the pile of uh, hooks. <laughs> Story threads. We might explore, might yeah. not. As a player, it's easy to forget from session yeah. to session those things. Yeah. So, like, because there's this thread in the uh, subreddit, which is, like, it's, it's this huge, sprawling thread about Season 4. Hmm. And, uh, I don't know, some people... I like uh. Season 4. I think it might be my favorite season. But someone was saying that they don't like the episodic nature of it, and how each episode is kind of a little bit self-contained. And that there's not a lot of suspense. But for me, some of the older seasons were more, like, some were pretty good and some were pretty, like, depressing. You know what I mean? Like, these are all, to me, like, all the the episodes are fun. I I don't know. That's why I like this season. And I just, I like them being in Waterdeep. I like them having their own house. And it's like... A lot of things are happening, mm-hmm. and maybe they're not going in a straight line, but things are happening, you know, and they will all connect. I mean, I think yeah. there will be a lot of plot threads that will fall by the wayside, but... Like I for th- Nair Never Ember. <laughs> We've seen once. He never like, showed up again. <laughs> yeah, I don't really agree that it's episodic, mm. because there's just so much happening at once that it's like, yeah, it seems like this was open and shut, but no, it went way over here. And now we're going to get over here in like three episodes. And it's like, and that's how it felt. And I, I don't know exactly. It's, it's, <laughs> I think what it's, I'm thinking. it's interesting. Like this season that they've, this is the season with the most NPC interaction. I think the group has had, because for most of the first three seasons, it's just basically been them and maybe one or two others, but now they have to like, it's interesting to see them like this season deal with people in mm-hmm. in a it's city true. in a in society rather than just kind of like being in the the woods or being like in the jungle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they close the closest they got before was at in the Storm King's Thunder season two at the the Citadel. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. the Citadel Adbar. That yeah. was the closest they got there before 
Waterdeep. The one thing that I will say has kind of like bothered me as well, like there are a few episodes like when uh, Alessandra first showed up and there was like this big deal made about going to get the Ring of Winter. And then the next episode wasn't about mm -hmm. that at all. And it was kind of like, okay, well, never mind then. <laughs> yeah. And that, that is a little weird, I will say. It kind of bothers me, but... Yeah, same with the Pax Unplugged one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That one was huge. There was so mm -hmm. much player backstory God. that didn't get utilized. Let's go find the people who murdered Paulton's wife. And then the next episode, nothing. I yep. was, That's I was right. so sad. Mm, that's right. Oh, man. Uh, it's true. I that would have been awesome. Closure, please. <laughs> please, Chris Perkins. <laughs> I beg of you. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. To me, I don't know. This, it, is, this is my favorite season. It's like, it's not not un entertaining. It's just yeah. all the things. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> exactly. I think that span between 50 and like between the latter half of season two and like season three was i think my favorite but that's it's hard to maintain that much intensity like it's you true. start getting like exhausted i think having like the change the change in feel from this season i think is a nice nice change of pace because i think it's gonna from like i think once they're done with the um the heist i think it's gonna get real hard for them again i think it's gonna get high level yeah like craziness for them yeah I think so too. For sure. I, I want to see more Shemeshka, but... <laughs> yeah. That's a really long-term thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. All right. R Romysis. They never actually announced turning level 12 on the show, but Holly confirmed her new spells on the Idol Champions interview. Oh, okay. yeah. I didn't see that one. Wicked Raygun says, I think the self-contained nature of this season fits them better. I don't like... I never liked, like, Saturday morning cartoons where every episode was its own thing and they didn't hook together. Yeah. But uh, for this... This isn't really that yeah. for the most part. Like, I think the beach episode... It... it You could definitely watch it on its own and, like, get it. But then there's the stuff like Warrington and the auction and uh, Zelifarn and stuff and Castle Ravenloft. Stuff like that. So, uh, there there are definitely story threads that are still present, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I do like that some things get brought up, and it's like this is what's happening in this episode, and then oh, yeah. back in the back, there's like, and these are the things that are being affected by it. <laughs> yeah. Remisa says fans on Reddit spotted their stats suddenly changing on D and D Beyond. Their Twitch sidebar stats have to be updated. Oh, okay. I just I, I I think they did say on stream when they did level because I think they're excited about the spells they got. I think the only only thing that they kind of kept secret. I think Jared kept DS feet secret until oh, really? he wanted to use it. But I think they def definitely did mm. announce their their leveling up. Look at Troopa says I kind of like that episodes have a story of their own because I'd rather not be forced to watch too many episodes in a row on account of their length. That's why I was never able to get into Critical Role. Critical Role is yeah. long. It's, it's like five yeah. hours. It's Every long time. and it's um yeah. It's table combat. It's um oh. it's oh, good combat. Yeah. yeah. I I I watch Critical Recap. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> to get all the all the important stuff. And then if I want to go back, I can just listen to some clips. <laughs> Uh, Simon says, Jared said they leveled in the chat the very first 10 minutes of the first show that they were level 12. Oh, Pretty okay. sure. Okay. And Remysis says, it's frustrating when the plot threads that are left hanging at the end of an episode get totally ignored. Yeah. I guess that, that seems like a... a, a yeah, mossy stone. Yeah. Chris sometimes will set up, like, when, when it's a new episode, mm -hmm. he'll kind of, like, he doesn't pick up right where they left off. Sometimes he goes, yeah. some time has passed, and you want to go to the beach. That's pretty much how this episode started. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because he, he wants to do it all in two hours. So so I think part of that might be why he just 
sets them on their course or whatever and they, yeah. they go from there i think it's it would be it still is slightly frustrating but i think the fact that they the things that are brought up usually come back after some amount of time uh -huh. is something that i kind of like it's just like kind of in and out like there might be an episode without like certain things but eventually within a certain amount of time they come back it reminds me a lot of like a star trek season mm -hmm. kind of and how it's set up because mm -hmm. like oh here's a really plot heavy episode then like a lighthearted another lighthearted one mm -hmm. oh plot heavy again here you go mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. Prepare for yourself. Like it was like Ring of Winter, and then Beach, and now the next one will probably be like, ah, you know. And, and right before the Ring of Winter was, let's make a pie. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. 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 He changes it up. I would guess that if the group said to Chris, like, probably not during an episode, but at the end of one, <laughs> hey, next time can we do blah blah blah? I would guess he'd be like, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I think he just kind of, I don't know, like, okay, say they started the beach episode and the group decided to go investigate Paulton's wife thing. Mm. He would go with it, right? Yeah. I think so. He'd mm. go with it. Yeah, for sure. I, I also think like the, there's the whole, he's DMing a whole bunch of stuff at one time. <laughs> With mm -hmm. this, there's lots of different things to bring in. So maybe he's like t putting that, like, okay, I'll think about that, but and have them do this. <laughs> mm. That's probably what's happening. Mm. Uh, all right, we're running low on time, and there's some other stuff I wanted to ask. All right, first of all, okay, so they got two packages, right? One yes. was the invitation to the auction, the other one mm -hmm. was a rug of smothering for Audra Nell. Who oh, yeah. is Audra Nell? I don't know. Nobody I don't know. know. Don't know. Now it was the right address, right? Or was it, it... just just Troll School Alley? I, I it might oh, be. Yeah. It might be a previous owner of the building. Mm -hmm. It might be someone else that they haven't met, even though they've been there for a few months. Because there's that. <laughs> um, he did say that they didn't know anyone on Troll School Alley with that name. The hmm. two previous. Oh. The two previous owners were there was Alcoria Stone Marrow, right? Yep. Volo owned it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, Magnus Burnsides actually owns it now. Mm -hmm. And there was a hag that supposedly lived there. I don't know if that's how it is in Dice Camera Action, but I think it is. Um, I think minus the Volo, I think, for, for Dice Camera Action, I think, possibly. Possible, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, is. It's like, all right, so is Audra Nell a neighbor that it just got brought here? Potentially. Good question. Right? I mean, is that an, an, an alter, like a fake name of Olcoria Stone Marrows, maybe? That she, yeah. That someone knows her by that name? Maybe. I, I tried to, like, put together, like, if it was an anagram of something, but I couldn't come up with anything yeah. that oh. made sense to me. So or it could have just been a fake out, like, like someone wanted to kill the Waffle Crew, so they sent that and used Audra Nell as a decoy. And maybe it's like there's some grave or crypt that'll give them a clue as to who, you know who's Audra Nell. And then it's like, oh, Audra Nell's dead, you know, some kind of Riddler kind of thing, you know, where it's probably Jarlaxel just. <laughs> 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 Don't tell people about my submarine. Or... <laughs> Please stop talking about Unless myself. Audra Nell is like the name of Paulton's dead wife. Oh, God. Good Lord. His dead wife is San Sandra. Ah, okay. Though it, that either of these could be uh, an alias. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so nobody true. knows who Audra Nell is. All right. Um, Wicked Raygun. I'm a big believer that adventures need downtime, if only to explain the power creep of leveling. I hate when a level 1 PC hits level 20 in two months. I agree. Yeah, same. Yeah. I love downtime. Sometimes you need a shop, too. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes you need a shop. Sometimes you just need to hang out with NPCs you're friends with, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's fun. It's kind of enjoy all of the stuff that you've got. Yeah. And, and it, in Otherwise, why world. adventure, you know? Yeah. You can't spend your money and stuff. Some of the most fun parts of D&D &D are like 
that was when I got hooked on D and D. Was when I was running a campaign and the group decided they wanted a castle. Mm. They sat down and drew the map of their castle together. Wow. You know, and it was just like that's when I think it really clicked for everybody. We were totally a hundred percent in on the campaign. You know, it was, it was just, and it, that always stuck with me. You know, it was it wasn't the weird adventures that I was running. It was like them thinking about what their characters are doing in their castle and who lives there with them and like the weird NPCs they picked up, they brought them into the castle and this person lives here and this person lives here and that so like I think it's I think it's really important in D and D that that stuff mm -hmm. you know especially because yeah. it's like you get gold in D and D and like what do you do with your gold you spend it on yeah right I forget you have it I mean how funny mm -hmm. like especially when you're a kid. So you go through, you know, you go through dungeons and stuff, and you get your treasure and all that stuff. And then when you realize you can go to town and go spend your gold, and just get into hijinks in town, and you know, yeah. blow off steam, it's yeah. really fun. That's yeah. why fantasy Costco is so good in Taz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> also, no matter how much gold you have, you will try and bargain with someone. No matter how much gold you have, you'll yeah. be mm -hmm. poor market people. Yeah, you know. And then, and then you know the people, you get to know the people in you know, the world, and yeah. the whole thing feels. And then you end up, it's just the whole thing kind of like comes together, you know. You you get a real good picture of your character, and you know. and I mean downtime opens the way for like cool side quests too, yeah. based on what they do, you know. Mm -hmm. Like oh, I want to open uh blah blah blah. Oh well, if you have a blah blah blah. There are all these quest ideas I could do. Awesome. Mm -hmm. They have that in like what was it the um the Xanath or the um the downtime rules? Yeah. Yeah. That have like sometimes they have complications like you know leading to other things, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Need downtime. Didn't Holly have one of those rugs attack her? Oh, and trapped in the birdcage. Yes, right. Yeah. In the Sigil oh, poor, Marketplace. Poor, poor, poor reader. Audra Nell lives in the walls. What do you mean? Book a trooper. There was something. Someone was trying to get in their chimney or something at one point, right? Everything tries to get yeah. everywhere. Uh, Sima si says, sometimes you need downtime to open that big chest you found in your underwater adventures. Yeah. He hasn't <laughs> opened it yet. It's going to be something bad. What's in there? Well, the lockpicks he... didn't work. Yeah. He's way too happy about this thing for it not to be something terrible inside it. Watch, watch mm. it have to open with one of his keys <sighs> as it eats it. I think now that it's been kind of built up, there's something going to be something really good in there, oh. or interesting in there. Mm. Interesting. It's not just going to be like a 15 gold piece gem, you know. Mm -hmm. it's something of importance yeah. in some way or another. I think. Yeah. Uh, poor Jared. I wonder if he'll be carrying that thing for the next three seasons. <laughs> he, he doesn't seem to mind that it's taking a while. Would it fit in his bag of holding? I think it would. Right? Maybe. Uh, I forget the rule for the opening of a bag of holding, but it would fit into the space. Yep. Uh, it could be. <laughs> it could be a yellow ogre. Yeah. Could be an ooze in there. <laughs> it's a foldable hold, not a bag of holding. It's fine. Wicked Raygun. The chest is a dragon's hoard. Could be. Maybe. Could be. Could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saying he might have stealn stolen the bronze dragon sword? Oh, they had a brush with the bronze dragon yeah. in this episode. Yeah. Uh, yep. Strix was fishing, and she kind of, sort of caught the bronze dragon, but it got away. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. Do, they didn't. They just let it. Yeah. Yeah. I do wonder if Chris has like some idea that he wants to do with the dragon. You know, because it like it's connected to the whole everything in the harbor. <laughs> so Jarlaxle, possibly other stuff, you know. So two... And he's brought it up twice. Yeah. So oh yeah, the the submarine. You know. Yeah. Skullport. Luca says Skullport. maybe Audra Nell is the troll <laughs> whose skull lies at the base of the manor. Maybe. Could be. That'd be cool. And Simon says, maybe Audra Nell is the friends we made along the way. Oh. <laughs> it's one of them. <laughs> I remember I ran a one shot, a fourth edition one shot in the game store, and you find this treasure chest, and at the end, I went. They opened the chest, and I'm like, In inside you don't find gold or gems 
or magic items. No. Instead, you find the, the lasting memories of the wonderful <laughs> adventures you've had together today and the friends you made along the way. Thanks for playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And they're like, is this the stupidest thing? <laughs> <laughs> you don't oh, have Sean. No. No. Like a dodecahedron. <laughs> dodecahedron. And it replays something that just happened in that session. Good. It's a magic item. Good. And it's literally what you just said. I, I hope that what's in that thing isn't what's in like the chest if you fight the the Baba like the Baba Yasaga. That's just bad. Oh god, I don't even know what's Yikes. in there. I don't either, but that's oh, bad. It's a bunch of grasping hands that will kill you. It's terrible. Oh, Raygun, Raygun says, I, I, those crawling claws. I 100% believe Diaz has that bronze dragon's horde. That would be Aww. crazy. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be a cool one. How big and is he? can't even go into the dragon? city and get it. Oh, he's a young bronze dragon, I believe. Young? Yeah. So, he's, he's like horse size. He's not very okay. big. Yeah, he's not. Okay, I was going to say, it's like, that's a very small dragon horde. <laughs> Yeah, you know. weird. It's just not just about out of time, but actually, there's a bunch of things I want to ask you guys right. about real quick. Lightning round. Um, All right. Diaz's shabby bathing suit. Any thoughts? Nice on the sack. He's very <laughs> much a. Uh, he prior prioritizes utility over everything else. Yes, but it's it still embarrasses him. <laughs> he could get a new suit. He Good. could. It's kind of sad to see him embarrassed by his potato sack bathing suit. I think he was less embarrassed about his bathing suit and just the combination of I am so pale and oh. I am very not strong. And oh, I'm not feeling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he'll get a tan by the end. Pretty. Or burned. Has a tan or burned, yeah. yeah. Or burned. I know plenty of people who do not tan. Oh. <laughs> the benefit of being, I guess, maybe a Typically, you don't have to worry about that. Right. That's true. Yeah. Um, Simon built a replica of Castle Ravenloft. Mm -hmm. That was very well done. Mm -hmm. sick. It felt like something was going to... That meant something. Yeah. But I don't know what. I think he wants to go back to Barovia. Mm. I don't know about Ravenloft itself, but Barovia. Mm -hmm. who, who made him? I don't remember. He was a gift, right? Yeah. yeah. That he was lady. a gift. Oh, d does anyone see the parallel here? What? <laughs> the, they got Simon 2.0 by opening a box that wasn't meant for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Good job, Paulton. <laughs> opening stuff that isn't yours. Did Blinsky make Simon originally? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Because he's his real name is Piddlewick 2, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So Piddlewick. I don't remember who's Piddlewick 1. The uh, one a jester. Was, was the jester that he yeah. killed. Mm -hmm. A jester that was made because he was funny and um, they wanted him to be around more often, so they made a little Piddlewick 2. And Piddlewick 2 pushed him down the stairs. Oh, okay. Because oh. he thought it was funny. Hmm. <laughs> I only know that because I was like, oh, that's really creepy art of a jester. Thing that they found. Time to go look it up way back in season one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I just looked in Curse of Strahd. Evidently, Piddlewick II was made by a dude named Fritz von Werg. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> so that's his real dad. Evidently. Real dad, yeah. That'd be weird if they ran into Fritz von Werg. Would be. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe Fritz von Werg would want to keep him. He's kind of like Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be weird. Um, they really embraced the mom and dad thing, though. They totally did. Yeah. And yet they're not. High five parenting! Yeah. Yeah. They... Strix... Strix and Diaz have never been old married couples. Than in this speech episode, it's like, nope. stop working, have fun. It's true. <laughs> it's true. But I want to work. Um, <laughs> you know, another like... thing I want to note: Strix and Diaz found a bell. Mm -hmm. From a yeah. sunken ship, and they took it, right? Yep. Yeah. They, they have it. Put it and in the Troll Skull Manor, right? Yes. The most interesting thing is that Diath like asked, "Hey, did I find anything?" And Chris is like, "No." 
And then he went back and was like, oh, mm-hmm. wait, no, uh, you found a bell. Yeah. Which makes me think, what's mm-hmm. the bell Did from? Did he put it there? The bell. What's this? What is this, Chris? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. It, it wasn't there for long. It doesn't ring any yeah. bells. <laughs> All right. So, uh, any more comments? Walked right into that one. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what if Dieth finally opens the chest, a shining gold light shines out of it, and then the show just ends for good Pulp Fiction style? <laughs> that's fine with me. That would work for me. Yeah. Look at Troopa. That's, that's going to be a bummer when the show ends, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's just not going to be the same. It's kind of wild. Whatever comes after. Who knows? Whatever comes after might be better, but it's not going to be, you know. Mm-hmm. I just had an epiphany that's mm. probably nowhere near the correct answer. <laughs> what if it has something to do with Shemeksha's happy box? Happy box? The oh, box that the has a piece box. of his soul in it. Mm. Maybe this has a piece of somebody clock. else's soul in it. Uh, maybe. Hmm. I just know it's like grinding gears inside a Tumblr, that's... Or it could be DS Fathers or something like that, or it could be like something yeah. more like, to like yeah. ancestors or something like that. So, no. um, you know, There's so many could, things it could be. <laughs> the, the the guy, I think it was in the orc, was it? Oh, he's half dwarf, half... Half the dwarf, yeah. 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 Who brought yeah. Gutter to him in the first place? That, yeah. that guy's still out there. Yeah, right? he's, he's out still there. alive. Yep. yep. That's yep. True. And he would probably have all of the answers to all of Diaz's questions. And he's probably in Sigil. They could pro- they could probably look him up and find him. I think his name is was was uttered. I don't remember what it was. I could be wrong, but yeah, I don't. Um, Diaz's outfit sounds like DCA Advent calendar material. <laughs> Oh, okay. Simon has long-term evil plans. Uh, I hope not. Probably... Simon was made by Von Wirg. Wirg, says Remises. I hope the bell's like a chime of opening. That would be crazy if they ring the bell and a portal being... appears. A jerk. That would be epic. Hold on. The bell might be connected to the nautical source book coming out in March. There's a nautical source book coming out in March? Supposedly. there's there's They've had hints that it has something to do with like ships. So... Really? Yeah. That is awesome. We'll see. It's an Arcanala summoning bell, a dwarf, oh, no. and Diath doesn't want answers. He wants to stay a blissfully oblivious to his past. Uh, yeah, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, but it's probably going to get dumped it's on him. Probably at some not point. good, whatever it is. No. Right. <laughs> we are over time, so we are no. going to go ahead and wrap this mother up. Uh, why don't we do some plugs and and get out of here? Rena, got any plugs? Maybe. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Sean, you got any plugs? <laughs> yes. Uh, Friday on Encounter Roleplay at eight, at uh, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, it's uh, Octung Cthulhu, where we play a uh, group of investigators and trying to find Atlantis. Oh, and then on Saturdays awesome. at 6.30 p.m., uh, Hell's Rebels, where we're starting to get, like, we're going to have a little, might have a little conversation with the big bad of the uh, the campaign. We'll see. Okay. Bars of Light Throne. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dylan, do you got any plugs? I do. On Saturday mm-hmm. at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. I almost said 3. It's mm-hmm. at 1 this week uh, on Sean's channel. Mm-hmm. We're going to be playing Waterdeep Dragon Heist, mm-hmm. where last time we were on Jarlaxle Submarine, and, hey, the bronze dragon that was in this episode might have helped us get out. You know, he's a pretty cool guy. Mm-hmm. Uh but we have the Stone of Galore, and we're going for the Vault. So, come watch that. Yes. Nice. Vault time. All right, Rina, you got any plugs? Yes. On Sunday, I am in Dungeon Academy, which has a bunch of other dice camera action nerds, except Chloe, who's getting into it. <laughs> um, and we play every Sunday. Bad things happened last time. <laughs> we're in Barovia now. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's so good. It's so good. exciting. <laughs> I am very scared, um, but it's good and exciting and fun and yay. But yeah, and you can find me on Twitter at M I K O underscore C A R I N A. And remember, if you have idle champions, Paulton mm. is available. Mm. Complete your waffle crew. Complete it. The waffle crew oh, are stronger yeah. as a group. Mm. We have them. 
And uh, let's see, I want to thank all of our contributors today, including my wiki buddy, Remisis, who uh, actually has been working a lot on the the other wiki. I think it's I think it's called Fandom, that site. Uh, I think they're merging the sites. I'm not sure exactly how that's some... work, going to work, but uh, maybe me and Remisis will okay. team up to turn this Wikipedia into the most epic dice camera action encyclopedia Britannica that you could ever hope to see in your entire life. And Saima, thank you very much. Joe Venom, you are a wonderful human being. And uh, I love seeing those little icons next to your name. It, it makes me feel... Uh, I can't I can't put into words the feelings that I have. Aww. Look at Trupa! Romysis! Akapan, and all of the rest of our uh, fellow Dice Camera Action enthusiasts. Thank you very, very much for watching. So I will send you a message on Reddit. I don't log into Reddit much, so I'll, I'll do that, actually. I will I'll go in there. And uh, I want to th thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, on YouTube for watching. And uh, we yeah. will see you again next week. Uh, so have a great week, everybody. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye.